strong. This is Isabella and Tian, and today is Friday, September 10th, 2021. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence while we reflect on today's activities and focus on demonstrating our best behavior. Please be seated. Remember, warriors, to follow the three W's. Wear your mask, wash your hands with soap, and watch your physical distance. It's Froyo Friday, and I hope you are on your way to the cafeteria for TBC Live Frozen Yogurt. Today is only $2. Eighth and seventh graders basketball cheerleading tryouts will be on September 13, 2021. If you are interested, please collect paperwork from Danielle Kochler's office, room 238, right inside Mr. Bingle's room. Either from 7.50 till 8.10 and 3.10 to 3.15, or you can pick up a packet at the front office. Warriors, picture day is September 21st. Make sure you are dressed to impress. Tomorrow is National Patriots Day. Patriots Day occurs on September 11th every year in memory of all the people who died during the 9-11 attacks of 2001. All students are advised to use the tunnel of going to McDonald's or Chick-fil-A after school. For your safety, please do not cross Highway 54. Please reserve the privilege of gathering at Chick-fil-A. We expect you to be on your best behavior. Don't forget, a warrior is always responsible, respectful, and ready to learn. It's 8.52 here in New York. I'm Brian Gumble. We understand that there has been a plane crash on the uh, southern tip of Manhattan. You're this stage, we believe that a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. Manhattan. That is, once again, a picture of one of the towers of the World Trade Center. John Wells was preparing for his first flight out of Cincinnati Airport as a commercial pilot on the morning of September 11th. I got hired by Comair Airlines, which was part of Delta at the time. And that day was actually my first day, what's called flying the line, which is an actual point A to point B passenger trip. Nine o'clock in the morning, I got on the airplane and was busy getting all my paperwork ready. Passengers were boarding the plane. Then the captain got on. As soon as she came in the cockpit, she said, did you hear that? Plane just crashed into the World Trade Center. I said, I was so busy just learning my new job, it kind of went right over my head. I didn't even pay attention to it. I was like, okay, whatever. And a few minutes later, we were ready to push back. So I called the tower for pushback clearance and they said, just hold on a minute. Tell all the passengers, get their bags and get off the plane. This was about 9.05, so it just happened. And we looked at each other like, what? So we told all the passengers, get your bags, everybody get off the plane. And we got our bags and got off the plane and walked into operations. All we saw were just a ton of crew members standing around watching the TV screens for the next four hours. It was unbelievable. Paul Meyer was the director of operations at Hartsfield Jackson International Airport in Atlanta, Georgia, on the morning of September 11th. He was responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of the second busiest airport in the world. I was in the, what we call the South Hallway, kind of near the Delta ticket counters. And I got a call on my cell phone from someone in the office that said a small plane had just crashed into the World Trade Center. I'm thinking, okay, you know, maybe it's cloudy or foggy in New York City and a small plane got lost and, you know, a little plane like you see at Falcon Field or something. So that, that's what the initial report was. So I'm thinking, oh, that, that's not good. But 
you know, there's, there's not much that that's going to affect me. So I just went about my business and, and that was, that's how I first learned about what had started to happen. What were you thinking about as you watched the attacks unfold? What went through your mind? Stunned, like everybody else. You can't hardly say anything. You're just watching the TV. We actually saw the second one hit, and it's not like anything uh, I'd ever seen before. You just, you can't believe it. It's like watching a TV show or a movie or something. It's not real, but it was. Probably more, not fear, but more of how is this going to affect air transportation? Because when, when there's one airplane, you know, you think it's a, a horrible accident, uh, not intentional. So I really didn't have any worry right off the bat. But anytime there's a plane crash in the US or, or anywhere, uh, we're always worried about how it's going to affect people here in Atlanta. Did the flight take off from Atlanta? Were there people from Atlanta on it? Did people change planes from here? Was the plane coming to Atlanta? So we're always trying to figure those things out, trying to stay one step ahead. Um, so when the first plane hit, it, it just sounded like a, you know, a terrible accident and um, you know, nothing intentional. So my, my first reaction was, you know, how is this going to affect us? What do we need to do here in Atlanta? All flights need to stop, no more takeoffs, and everybody needs to land. So we're thinking, uh-oh, how are we going to do this? There were several hundred aircraft at any one time in the air coming to Atlanta. Um, the bigger problem was all the flights up in the air around Atlanta had to land. So we had a bit of a problem with gate space. We had all these flights sitting at the gate that suddenly were not going to depart. We were told that we have to close the airport, which we've never done before. And we don't have any locks on the door. You know, you have rental cars, so a lot of people landed and they rented rental cars. Eventually, the rental car agencies ran out of cars. The law enforcement and the canines, the dogs, they had to sweep each concourse. And, and that's why we had to get everyone out of the airport. Everything had to be turned upside down and inspected. I think everyone's life changed because it's the first time that, you know, there, there'd been that level of a terrorist attack in the U.S. Um, see something, say something. In the aftermath of 9-11, 25,000 people were left injured 